Okay, I want to talk a minute about how to uh, rig up a tuna casting rod for fishing. A, you know, it could be a hard bait like a Rapala Subwalker, it could be a popper like the, uh, the ones made by Uzuri or the larger ones. It doesn't really matter what you're throwing. Um, there's going to be a couple different ways to rig these depending on your fishing style. Um, I fish all spectra to a short fluorocarbon leader. When I say short, I'm talking three or four feet normally. Some guys like a lot longer leader. But the way you rig this is going to be dependent on the length of the leader you're fishing. So, if you're someone who likes to have a long enough leader that you make your entire cast without the specter coming off the reel, you're going to want to do a, if you're fishing a hollow specter, a served connection. And I use a, the Seaguar Threadlock for my offshore stuff. And I actually have another video I'm going to be linking to this article that shows you how to tie that uh, serve. And while that knot takes some longer to tie, you have to have the right equipment to do it at home, that knot will last you all season long if you don't run out of lead material. On the other side of the coin, if you're someone who uses a short leader, you're constantly retying your leader, you're going to use an FG knot, which I'll also link a video to in the article on BD Outdoors. The difference with the FG knot is it's quick to tie, but it's not as durable over the long term, especially if you're casting it through the guides, if you're, you know, you use a little bit longer leader, you're going to need to retie that, that leader every couple trips, basically, but it's a real easy one to tie. So the, uh, the next consideration is uh, how to attach your lure to your line. And this rod right here, I have 80 pound spectra to uh, 80 pound fluorocarbon, and I just tie an improved clinch knot. And there's a lot of different people that use different knots. And like some guys like the San Diego Jam Knot, some guys like the Palomar. I tie the uh, improved clinch and have never had a problem with it failing. And uh, you know, it, how hard can you pull on a jig stick with uh, 80 pounds? So you don't need to worry if it's not 100% knot. Quick to tie, reliable. It's very difficult to mess it up. And if you do mess it up, it'll usually fail while you're tying it, which is a good thing. When using heavier line, like this 100 pound. Uh, thread lock to 100 pound fluorocarbon leader. I like to use a, a, a crimp. And um, these are, you, could, you know, in a pinch you could also tie a clinch knot on it, but it's going to be a bulky knot, it's going to be tough to cinch down. Well the crimp makes a nice clean connection that's uh, very easy to, uh, to do and you can even do it on a boat, but if you're rigging up at home it's even easier. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. Okay, I'm going to show you how I uh, crimp these lures on. So basically, I use a, a Jinkai crimp. It's uh, aluminum. It's a single barrel. A lot of times you see the ones that have a double barrel. Those are designed to be used with wire. This just has a single opening. I don't know if you can even see that in the video. But I have some 100-pound uh, fluorocarbon leader here. I'm going to slide it through. I'm going to rig it to my uh, Yozuri pop pencil popper here. Service cruiser, I should say. And I'm going to slide it back through. It's kind of a tight fit. Um, if they're sized right, it should be kind of difficult to get that back through there. The next step is, before you crimp anything down, you're going to want to um, uh, spread out the end of the fluorocarbon so it won't slide back through the crimp. And when I'm on the boat, I'll use a little hand torch like this, but it takes two hands to start it, so I'm just going to use the lighters here at home. And all I'm doing is heating up the end of the mono, tapping it down, spreading it out a little bit, so that when I pull it back through, it's going to butt up against the... Uh, leader there and not slide out. So I'm going to cinch that down to where I want it. I'll leave it sticking out a little bit on the end there just to uh, so it could be right up against it, it doesn't really matter. Once I do that now I'm ready to crimp it. So I get my crimping pliers and I grab the crimp in the tall way in the position that it, uh, you can see it's in the vertical thing. Let me give this a good squeeze. And you want to be careful not to crimp all the way out to the end of the crimp. So if you have a smaller crimp like this, you're going to try and keep it centered. If you have a longer crimp, you could do two. But that's basically ready to go there. You have a nice clean connection. Very easy. It's not going to fail on you. And it's really a clean knot for a heavy line. And the other nice thing is it gives you some action here. Some guys like to use chafing too. But, I mean, with the stuff that I'm fishing with, you know, I'm mostly fishing fish in a 100-pound class. I haven't really found it to make any difference. Because I'm also uh, retying pretty regularly. So there you go. That's how to crimp it.